Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to give folks just a couple more moments to uh, jump on this call before we kick things off. But I hope everybody's having a fantastic week. And, uh, you know, I had a great fourth. I know we didn't get together last week as a result of uh, the 4th of July. So I hope everyone had a wonderful week uh, last week. This week, um, we are going to focus a little bit on going back to the basics. I've been speaking with a number of my um, my existing MSP partners, a lot of ones that have gone through ramp camp. And, um, you know, some have talked a little bit about some of the challenges they're facing when they have been meeting with the customer on a regular cadence for a year, year and a half, let's say. And now everybody's kind of comfortable in that that routine. And, you know, we, we run into that situation of one of those meetings about and, um, you know, why should we keep having them uh, from the customer perspective? And, you know, one of the things I always go back to is, you know, what are the things that we can do to keep a customer entertained, keep them understanding what's going on? and keep them informed. And um, you know, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about going back to the basics and making sure that our messaging hasn't fallen off. Because what we've really found in speaking with a number of these MSP partners is that over time, they've gotten a little lax in their conversation with their, um, with their um, you know, with their customer partners and things have become a little too familiar. And as a result, they're kind of shortcutting the process. And then ultimately, when we do that, we run into situations where the customer is just, you know, not sure what to do next. Or all of a sudden we start getting that slowdown in deals or deal friction that we've experienced in the past. So today we're going to talk about some tactics to kind of make sure that we uh, don't fall into that trap and some things we can do to expand our relationship long term. So um, before we cut, jump into the actual training today, I do want to share with everybody that we're going through some rebranding of some of the products to help everybody kind of get a better sense of what VCIO Toolbox's capabilities are. Um, we have always looked at ourselves as an account management and advisory platform, but let's be very specific about what we do. We help account managers and VCIOs, and we help build, build VC sub programs and help that side of the equation as well. So we've now taken our product sets and basically given them new brand names. We've got our on point account management suite, which includes our key account management, our QBR tools and our CX tools, the customer feedback, customer experience tools. And really that, that suite of products is geared to reporting out to our customers, getting engaged in QBRs as we'll be discussing today, getting continual feedback and being able to measure the account both from a pipeline perspective, but a strategy perspective within the key account management um, area. The companion to that product is Cybrance, which we used to just call GRC. Cybrance is our, uh, you know, our security suite. Today, it includes our governance risk and compliance tool, which will be getting a, um, an upgrade in the near future with a new risk register being put into that platform. And then we have our third-party risk management uh, module as well. So uh, again, we've got uh, the risk register coming in soon. We've got some interesting integrations that are going to help support Cybrance uh, coming up in the next three to six, three to four weeks. And uh, we're really excited about where that's heading and certainly the demand in the marketplace. But collectively, we'll refer to these products as part of the BCIO Toolbox platform, which is really your platform for really communicating and engaging with your customer in a variety of different needs that are really more consultative based. So um, so that's really kind of an overview of the platform itself. Most of you are familiar with the different services in there, but those are just a couple of uh, things that I wanted to bring up to date before we jumped in today. But let's talk about what I'm getting as feedback from a lot of our customers that they're getting as challenges as they you know move through the QBR cycle with their customers. And there's five predominant ones that we hear a lot about. It'll be, you know, the first one is getting the right people in the room. Again, after the, some of the initial QBRs where there's some big hit items that are taken care of, some of the senior leaders will, you know, kind of play that game of, hey, you got things on track. We don't need to be at these meetings. You can do this with your point of contact. Problem is, when that starts happening, one, we're not getting people that ha know what's ex what some of the new initiatives are going to be for the organization. A lot of times those haven't trickled down. So this can really impact our strategic plan. And as you know, our strategic plan is a big alignment point for us to make, you know, make a customer more comfortable long term. The second problem with this is they start losing touch with technology. That constant um, feeling of, you know, hey, 
uh, everything's under control here, can quickly turn on a dime when there is a problem or somebody else comes in talking about a cheaper option or a different option from you. Some of the other folks are starting to have challenges keeping the meeting on track. They're forgetting some of the fundamental principles about being a VCIO and taking charge in that room. And it's going back to some of those conversations that really turn into, you know, set, we'll, we'll call them B-word sessions about yesterday's problem and last week's uh, challenge. They start veering, you know, another thing that I'm starting to see from some of our MSPs, they start moving away from some of the data points that they covered in the first few meetings. You know, they'll go, hey, let's really just focus on the roadmap as we move forward into meeting three or four. And they don't revisit some of the, the tangential growth drivers that they may have already solved for the customer or look at those performance charts and show where things improve. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're staying very consistent in what you're delivering, because then that message will resonate from meeting to meeting. People start reverting back to getting too technical in these sessions. It's a comfort zone for a lot of folks. A lot of VCIOs are the technical owners, right? And of course, leaning on tech is a very comforting uh, component to, uh, for folks that came up in that field. But we got to remember, we're talking to business people who understand business concepts, who might be tech savvy, but aren't IT pros like yourselves. So we really want to make sure that we're not getting too technical in the meeting. And again, they start straying away from that business to technology alignment. We're going to cover off a little bit on the strategy plan again today and how to use it as a tool of strength and a tool of advisory and not fall back into just a performance back and forth as you have these conversations. And again, why are we trying to do this? We need to protect ourselves from the curse of the great MSP. <clears throat> the biggest challenge in our industry, and it's one not found in many others, is the more that we do remotely and the more that uh, we do things automatedly, which it will only continue to grow over time, the less and less downtime the customer experiences and the less we tend to be on site, right? And as a result of this, if people are not engaged the right way, if they're not seeing value in a different way, you're going to get that dreaded phone call, which is, hey, you're not the guys for us anymore, right? It's such an interesting premise here in the MSP community where the better we do and the more stable things we get, the harder it is to keep our jobs. And, um, you know, and that's because we do a lot under the covers of night and, um, and we really need the customer to understand where we help intersect in a perfect opportunity as we move forward, as break fix continues to dwindle down. As we continue to see uh, more and more customers getting towards a cloud first posture as a result of uh, you know, the COVID era, if you will, we now need to get into a point of advisory, especially in those specific verticals that we serve. So really, you know, when you think about the TBR, the biggest issue that comes up is our messaging tends to go from you know, kind of being very proactive and bigger picture into kind of this more mechanical and technical thing. And really what it comes down to is it's not about them anymore. It's going back to that point of here's the things that we did for you. And this is all the stuff we did to validate our jobs. And we're forgetting about the part about understanding where they're trying to go as a business and making sure we're making those solutions. So when you're get, going through your meeting prep, you've got to be asking yourself the question, is this content I'm about to deliver or the way I'm about to deliver it about me, meaning the MSP provider? Is this about what we're doing for you or is it about them? How the things we're doing are supporting the initiatives that they care about. Now, that's a very subtle difference, right? Because a lot of the information works in both places, but it's all about how you present it. You've really got to be looking at this saying, am I presenting it from a, hey, we've got these tickets and you'll notice that we've reduced some of your ticket accounts. And what this means to you is you've had more reliability and uptime. And the reason we've done that is because of some of these things we fixed, as opposed to that conversation that many of the MSPs I worked with had before they met VCIO Toolbox, where they were coming in and going, look at us, we did all these tickets for you and you didn't know these things were happening. And this is what we do to be proactive in front of you. The message about proactivity is really good, but it's really about you taking care of problems, right? And that's what they pay you for. The other side is, hey, by taking care of these problems and reducing the tickets, these are the gains you had as a business. 
more productivity, more efficiency, less downtime, whatever the case may be. So we want to make sure that we're making that spin in the conversation. You know, what do our clients really care about at the end of the day? You know, they don't care about the performance specs. They don't care even really about what we do. They just want to know that we're doing it. What they care about is information that's going to help them make business decisions. They want to know if these, these opportunities that we look at with them are going to make their business better, maybe more productive, more efficient. Can we demonstrate how they're going to get a return on investment for moving forward with a product or a service in their roadmap, or how it can ultimately reduce cost for them in situations where it's going to not necessarily help them generate new revenue, but will definitely help them become more efficient. Obviously, they're worried about security, but you also know as an MSP, while they care about security, not all customers are truly investing into that security. So this gives you an opportunity to kind of probe as well. And the biggest question that the customer cares about is, do they even need this? Whatever this may be, right? If it's a product or a service like that. So we got to always be thinking about our presentation and our QBRs, you know, especially as we're looking at going back to the basics here and say, am I addressing these types of questions? What we care about and what we need to be focusing on as part of the QBR and if we ask these questions right, these things should get satisfied, is how do they see the value in our services? It can't be about just ticket counts or what we do or visibility. It's got to be understanding that we're protecting them and where we're engaging with them, and we want to be a leadership partner with them. And you hear that often from me if you've been on these calls. Our job is to be a leadership partner as well as an operational partner to the clients we serve. The next thing is, how can we get these, you know, we care about is how do we get these projects and services approved faster? Well, if we're staying on cadence with bringing in new projects, working through the adoption process, making sure we're tying back to goals, we're going to help the customer see the why. And anytime they understand the why, we're going to see less sales friction. You know, we also want to look at how we can get them to understand the need for security, right? I was just kind of touching upon that. They know they need security, but sometimes they don't know to what level. So we've got to be prepared to go in there and tell them what they might be concerned about from something as simple as a cyber liability level and where they have gotchas that could potentially cost them more, whether it's a higher premium or maybe even the risk of not getting cyber insurance. And then we've got to show them how that's going to make their business better, right? And then the last thing we care about is how can we work better together? If we've got a customer that's starting to question where we sit within the relationship, obviously this can put uh, a little bit of a divider on us versus them in terms of uh, you know a working in relationship. So we really want to make sure that we understand uh, from them you know how we can work better together, and we're asking that question. You know, ultimately. BCIO Toolbox is here to help you be your client's trusted advisor. But I, you know, our tool can only help you that if you're subscribing to that process and carrying it through consistently from meeting to meeting and not falling into that trap that we often do when we're with people we're comfortable with. Straying away from that QBR process as we get to meeting four, five, six with that client and letting them dictate the meeting instead of us dictating the meeting. So when I see the word trusted advisor, you know, in my mind, um, it's about being that leader for them. It's about taking charge in that meeting and helping them understand what they don't understand, even though they have the right to say yes or no to everything that we, we talk about. And really the three steps that we got to take in the big picture to do this is collaborating with that customer on a strategic plan. We really need to understand where we're going. We need to understand the key initiatives the customer is chasing after, even if they're not technology related. We need to be the ones to bring the IT goals into that plan so they can see that we're there to shape what they need to consider from an IT perspective. And then, of course, we're going to use this plan long term to, one, bring a little bit more transparency into how we bring the roadmap by showing where those projects intersect, but showing that motion over time, showing how we're progressing against meeting their business needs from meeting to meeting so they can continue to understand that value. That's true value, right? If we can show them where their business is getting better from the actions that we've done or the tools that we've implemented, now we're not fighting for our lives in those situations where they're questioning the bill and the curse of the great MSP starting to hit us, as I mentioned earlier. 
the other thing, and we do that through our gap assessment and our, our you know product roadmap. And then of course, staying engaged with our customers post meetings. This is another thing I've really started to understand in talking to our MSPs now that we've had some that have been with us for three plus years. Some of them are meeting with their customers. They may get to a more frequent um, or less frequent cadence because they have stabilized the environment and they're forgetting to do periodic check-ins in between the meetings. They're forgetting to get feedback from the stakeholders and they're staying in that seat where they're just talking to their comfortable point person at that client. So these are really the three foundational steps that I've talked about with many of you often in doing that process. So now transitioning into the system. Again, the areas we really need to focus on when we see our relationship starting to slide with the customer, we're seeing that our QBRs aren't as effective as they once were, is really making sure we re-engage our customers in their strategic plan. This goes back to that, it's all about them, right? So we really wanna make sure that when we're going into these meetings as follow-ups and we know we're starting to slide a bit, that we are re-examining what matters most to the customer. Hey, Mr. Customer, earlier this year, last year, whatever the case may be, we built our strategic plan. We put some initiatives in there. Obviously, us from your a leadership partner perspective, we brought these IT goals for you to consider. Specifically in this plan, we had modernized technology, can, uh, you know, getting rid of those end-of-life objects, uh, continuing our cloud transformation journey, and ensuring we had a strong security posture. You shared your concerns about making sure you maintain PCI compliance. And again, this is a fictitious company like Live Nation, you know, and you're looking to find new bands to sign. And that's a continual challenge you'll always have because that's where your revenue is made. You know, you're, you're opening up a new territory. We're launching some new global tours. Are these all still initiatives that you're working on? Do we need to add to this list? Do we need to make any adjustments to this list? Let's make sure that we're touching base in those meetings to understand that. Then let's make sure we're taking the time to really reinforce where we are in this plan. A lot of the MSPs I've been talking to when they get a little deeper into the process with the customer, they might touch upon the goals. They'll tell you, look, we're 63% of the way through the plan. We were only at 50 last meeting, but they don't deep dive into where some of the supporting goals have really been um, you know, assisted, right? So again, you can come through here and really make sure they understand, hey, since our last meeting, you know, we implemented Microsoft 365, which really helped with our support of these global tours. Because as you know, all those people are now chatting with you on Teams. You've got SharePoint sites for each one of those tours for them to get uh, information. And of course, as people come and go on the tour, you know, it being a transient process, uh, you're able to enable and disable those accounts in a single click. So, you know, that's been some momentum that uh, you couldn't reach before. You know, you want to come down to those projects you want to review. Look, I know you weren't big on getting a vulnerability scanner before, but you're going to see when you go to re, re, uh, renew your insurance, this might be an area that you're going to have to confront at that point in time. Vulnerability scanning is becoming regular and routine out in the marketplace when it comes to cyber liability insurance. So I'd like us to revisit that today. So you're giving them the why statement behind each one of these things and you're going through it. So don't forget when you know when you start moving through meetings and, and you get into that comfort zone of doing your QBRs, if you feel the relationship twisting a little bit, come back to the basics, go a little bit deeper on the strategy, reaffirm things as part of the meeting, make sure you're understanding things the right way. You may have found out there's a need to ingest some of these goals as a result of the work that you did to make them more relevant for today as well. So this gives you a huge opportunity to do so. Then on the flip side, when you get to recommendations, it's really leaning on that again to reaffirm those recommendations. When you get to the later meetings, one of the biggest problems I've been serving from our customers is getting those projects that were already adopted in principle out the door. Now, I'd also argue that's part of your in-between meeting process as well. If you don't have an eye on your customer's roadmap, if you're not paying attention to when those upgrades that they've already agreed to in principle are going to be, and you're waiting for that next QBR session, you're doing them a disservice as well as you. 
They've hopefully allocated those funds as a part of their roadmap planning, and they may be ready to do this and they're waiting on you to get it done. But like most of us, you're not going to push the issue until somebody comes and pushes you. So we want to make sure that we're revisiting the roadmap and we're getting in touch with our customer in between meetings on the projects that are upcoming. Or when we're writing that email to get that next meeting scheduled, we're laying the foundation for it. Hey, we've got three or four projects that are due this quarter, or we might even be running a little bit behind on. And I wanna make sure that we don't forget to cover off on those in our meeting and get to the next step. So you really wanna, you know, going back to the basics, you really wanna use this roadmap, but also make sure as you start now managing for the long term that you're adhering to this roadmap, that these projects are getting done relatively close to the dates that you put here. And if they need to be moved, you guys are jointly agreeing on moving those dates and making those changes within the system so you can stay true to it. This is but you know this is how you're going to help the CFOs be part of the team. They're going to see budget management. They're going to see you sticking to it. Customers always got a chance to say no at any time. But if they've already adopted a project, to me, if I stay on top of it, there should be no sales friction. They know the cost is coming. And once we get to that point, we can push it forward. If I'm not pushing it forward, it's because they're back to questioning the validity of that project, whether or not they need it, and what you know what it's going to really bring to them as a team. So, uh, you know, so that's really where I want, um, you know, want you guys to start thinking about spending focus. It's really, you know, make sure when things start turning sideways, if, if you start feeling that with some of your customers after a few QBRs, they, they're comfortable in the process, they, you know, the old proverbial trust is there, hey, you know, love what you guys are doing, you know, we don't need to meet as much, you remind them that part of the reason you're meeting is not just to dictate to them what's going on from a technology perspective, but to continue learning where they're trying to go with their business. And if their business is going through any level of change, you want to be in tune with that so you can make sure that they're aware of any security concerns they need to consider and that you're aware of things that you may need to adjust to to meet their need under your service contract. So that's really kind of the big one, you know, big message for today. I think I've kind of beat that dead horse a little bit, as they say. Uh, you know, it's really about going back to the basics. When you feel that moment where everybody's getting a little too comfortable in the process and you're struggling to get the C-level execs to come to the room, to partake in these business reviews, you know, think about either, you know, changing your cadence to be a little bit, you know, more in tune with what their needs are at that point in time and make sure that you're going back to the basics of really focusing on the strategic plan, keeping that current keeping people informed on how the strategic plan is being met, and then coming back into your roadmap and making sure you're staying on task and on timeline with the roadmap. And don't be afraid to call the customer out if they are falling behind, because you can remind them based on some of these goals here, why it was important to them. And in some cases, why it's important to the security of their business, right? Those end of life, end of warranty machines become exploitation devices if not managed, um, you know, quick enough. So guys, that is really what I have for you today in terms of returning back to the basics. Um, I'm gonna open up the floor now for Q&A. I will open up chat as well um, in case anybody's having issues accessing chat. I often forget to make it accessible for everyone at the beginning of my meetings, but, um, but, um, uh, with that being said, let me know if you have any questions that you'd like to answer. Yeah, so the GR, uh, GRC integrations and risk register. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a full demo on risk, risk register that's going through the QA process right now. And really what Q, the risk register is going to be able to do is a couple of things. For those of you that are familiar with the risk register, um, you know what a risk register is. There's a number of pre-populated risks that almost every company um, faces that will be built into the risk register. And this will give you the opportunity to determine if they're high impact, low impact, and it potentially even put a financial uh, cost to that. Then as you conduct your framework, uh, you know, your framework analyses and do your assessments, any of those items that you identify as risk will transfer to the risk register as well and give you the opportunity to then do a more granular view of what's going on from a risk perspective and uh, build out, you know, those high, those likelihoods and probabilities as well in there. So, you know, marking things high priority, high likelihood and so forth. So we'll be going a little bit deeper into that. I'm just getting kind of trained up on it. And we've been having some discussions with a few of our customers on some things that might have to be modified 
for specific um, verticals, you know, within the risk register, there's kind of a general risk register concept that exists out in the marketplace that, you know, NIST ties to many things, but, you know, there are regulations like FFEIC that require a couple other details to be in the risk register. So uh, that's one of the things that we're, you know, solving out for right now uh, before releasing that. But that one is uh, almost ready to go and is something that we're hoping to get out uh, within the next four weeks. Other things that are coming down the pike in terms of integrations, we've just started looking at some of our uh, vulnerability scanning integrations. So um, two that are upcoming and in, in development right now. Uh, one is with kind of the granddaddy of the um, of the uh, marketplace, uh, the Nessus tool. So there will be the ability to potentially bring in your Nessus scans and be able to attach those very easily as evidence as you go through the process. And we're working very closely with one of the MSP specific vulnerability scanning vendors right now. And we'll have this live within the next six weeks as well. And that's with Nodeware. Uh, Nodeware is a vulnerability scanner that'll, you know, chart some of the CVEs. And we're going to be able to bring that in as, uh, you know, as, as an evidence source for you as well, as well as bringing in your security posture into the system through integration there. Work has also started commencing on bringing in the AWS inspector, as well as the Azure. I'm going to use the word inspector, but I know it's not the right word right now as well. So those vulnerabilities can get cataloged and attached where required within the system as well. Obviously, reducing the clicks that you need to make to get to the answers you need to answer a lot of the controls-based questions. So those are some things that are going very fast and furious on the GRC side of things. You know, as we committed to in the beginning of the year, the GRC is something that has had a lot of um, you know, interest from our, our client base. It's something that we're seeing really being readily used uh, by our existing customers and converted into new revenue streams for them uh, around VC. So as a service, so we are committed to getting uh, you know certain uh, uh, components that we feel are, are kind of table stakes for that uh, into the system as quickly as possible and risk register followed by um, by, you know, obviously uh, assessment mapping are the next two big ones on the chart and ones that we're hoping to complete before the end of Q3. Certainly the risk register will be in uh, before the end of Q3, The um, you know, and, and we're aiming for the same thing for the uh, the mapping of those uh, those components. The integrations across the tool are going to continue to expand as well. And obviously the uh, integrations with the vulnerability scanners are big for the GRC, but there will be components of the... Um, upcoming uh, RMM scan or RMM integration, starting with Automate, that'll be coming into our system. That'll also bring information that can be used within the GRC uh, view as well. Think of things like patch updates and or missing patches and patch status and things like that. Any other questions I can answer for you uh, this afternoon? Um, right now, it seems like that might be the only one that's coming in. Um, I, you join us again each Tuesday um, as we go through, you know, each Tuesday, uh, travel permitting. I will tell everybody the week of August 1st to August 3rd. I hope you join us at CompTIA's Channel Con. We'll be out there and I'd uh, love to see you. If you do, stop by our booth. We'd love to say hello. Um, we'll be putting out some promotional stuff there as well. I think you've got an opportunity to get reduced cost uh, tickets. So stay tuned to our socials for some of that as well. And then, uh, you know, we're competing in the IT uh, or ConnectWise Pitch It program right now. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for a lot of different um, updates that are going on throughout there. But we'll be down at IT Nation Connect this year as well and hope to see many of you at that show. With that said, since I haven't seen any other questions come in while I was giving you some self-promotion, um, I'll let you guys have a couple minutes back in your day. Thank you for joining us again as, as you do every Tuesday, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week.